What we want to talk about for a few minutes here is quality service QoS. Describe the concepts to drive congestion management avoidment and avoidance techniques. We see congestion management on the highways, and again, you know, I'm kind of into the let's compare the the network traffic, <clears throat> the digital traffic, to what we see on the highways. Very similar concept to these things. The early on thing, I guess, won't be the first thing, but one of the important things to understand about quality of service is if you have enough bandwidth, you don't need it. The quality of service is only required when we don't have enough bandwidth, when we, have, when we need to prioritize traffic. Uh, if you don't have that, probably don't have that at home, you don't need to, to prioritize traffic. A lot of uh, enterprises now have, with, have enough bandwidth with the, all of the improvements that we made. So you're not always going to need to do this, but you need to know conceptually what it is and what we're trying uh, to do with these things, uh, to, to go from one to the other, to use one uh, from the other. Uh, in order to be able to prioritize if we need to do that. We do that on the highways all the time, and, and we only prioritize certain times of the day. Uh, carpool lanes, usually after rush hours in the non-rush hour environments, anybody can use them. We don't need them, but we get them in force, theoretically anyway, during rush hour. So we have congestion management. We use congestion avoidance. We do here, and I'm sure that you, they do in your areas when you get ready to get on the interstate. During rush hour for the congestion avoidance, they have the red lights though, to regulate how much traffic can get onto the, uh, onto the highway at any given time. Uh, so congestion management, congestion avoidance, and the congestion avoidance here was a the drops early uh, early traffic and that's what we'll do with the red lights we're going to drop early traffic we're going to drop the traffic early in the in the sequence so that they don't contribute to the congestion that we would have uh, with these things the quality of service and this is an image that kind of hopefully kind of sort of shows uh, what goes on uh, with these things in the top one here we don't have any control and if we don't have any control we're going to call it best effort so best effort means that we just kind of let everything do what it wants to do uh, tcp is going to become greedy uh, video is going to need you know pretty consistent uh, transmission that goes on for these things so in this one up here we have a situation that yeah, we have a, we're streaming, we're watching a movie or whatever else, and then uh, internet browsing. Some TCP service decides to come in and take over everything. So now our video is going to be frozen here for a while. And down here, you're playing your gaming maybe, and then you know you're not getting uh, what's going on. I'm not a gamer, but you're, you're not participating fully because you don't have the bandwidth. And the bandwidth here again is if, if we have insufficient bandwidth. Down here with quality of service rules applied, the video streaming gets allowed, gets, uh, gets allocated, and we'll say gets allocated a certain amount. So maybe it gets allocated 20% of the bandwidth. And then the uh, general internet browsing gets allocated, well, let's, let's make this guy like now maybe 50%. And the because we're going to make these lower, this one may be 20%, and then we would have our gaming would be 30%, so that everybody gets their little portion of what goes on. The streaming and the gaming obviously are going to be real time to do this thing. General internet browsing and updates. If you're going to a web site, do you really know the difference if you, if it is delayed by two or three milliseconds? These guys will know that if it's delayed by anything at all. Uh, my experience this is another one that I kind of just jumped in. So let's see what this will do and then forgot about it. Uh, I had a, a router. I was poking around, a new router poking around, seeing what was going on. I said, hey, you can prioritize your video. So I said, okay, let's prioritize the video. 
thinking, of course, not thinking through, but thinking, of course, that when I had video, it would give it priority handling. What it did was reserve a certain amount of the bandwidth for that. So, well, you know, this this web browsing, this web stuff is getting kind of slow here. So go do the, uh, 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 the speed test, and sure enough, it was getting a little slow. And then it's cha-ching. Oh, yeah, I configured uh, quality of service. I had reserved a certain amount of bandwidth for the video. Not that it would get priority when it was coming in, but it was reserved whether I had video going or not. Do the same thing when we started doing VOIP, voice over IP. Uh, we reserved a certain amount of the bandwidth for voice calls because we didn't ever want them to fail. So the voice calls would always go through, which meant that everybody else didn't have that traffic. Kind of back to the carpool lanes. The people that have the sufficient number of riders in the car get to use those. We reserve that for them. Are they always full? No, as a matter of fact, they're probably kind of empty most of the time. So that's one of the, I guess, downsides, upsides, roundsides uh, for reserving bandwidth. Do we really want to do it? Do we really need to do it? When you do these things, again, if you have sufficient bandwidth, which I have at home and you probably have at home, you don't need to do these things. So what is it? Uh, it's the ability to provide different priority to different applications, users or data flows. And I want to do in a few minutes, I want to do, after we do some of this lecture, do a uh, try to do a little demo with Packet Tracer. So what we're doing here to guarantee a certain level of performance to, uh, to certain data flows. The order that we're going to do them here is probably the one that's down here, voice, video, and then data. Voice is going to be one of the very important ones. You know, so why, why not video? Voice, the phone calls, just the standard phone calls need to be clear. But think about emergency phone calls if you're using the VOIP. You're going to need those kinds of priorities in order to ensure that we're not having any issues with this. The image here supposed to represent uh, the different data flows that come into the router here and then the router puts them in queues and lines based on the priorities that might be assigned to them. We have the high priority, medium priority, and low priority. The, I like the way it gets until it gets to the output. What it kind of shows it being distributed, although it does show the high priority going out first. Uh, and we might have, and I probably would have drawn this with maybe different size things so that the high priority is probably going to get more bandwidth, going to get more time depending on how we configure it uh, to do these things. So we have the different types of traffic are going to get different preferences for these things. We're going to manage unfairness. And again, if you have sufficient bandwidth, and I'll probably say this too many times, but if you have sufficient bandwidth, you don't have to worry about this. These are the parameters that we talk about, that we have, that we can manage. Bandwidth, we, we look at bandwidth, we've talked about bandwidth. In this case, it's not the upper and the lower frequencies. What we're really talking about here is data throughput. The average number of bits of data uh, that can be transmitted from a source to destination in one second. Megabits per second, gigabits per second, uh, whatever, kilobits per second, whatever we're using. Latency, latency, fancy word for delay uh, or lag. The difference between the transmission of the signal and its receipt. And if you watch the local news, you probably see that where they've got the reporter in the field and they say, Okay, Jane, go ahead. And Jane's sitting there shaking her head for a few minutes and then starts talking because of the delay in the okay, Jane, and the delay in getting back. Once they get going, then they became, become consistent. And the consistency here is jitter. Jitter variability over time and latency, an inconsistent delay. Uh, when we do those things, which after we get the latency, after we get the delay, we have a consistent transmission, then we're not going to have any jitter. If we have jitter, it's going to be inconsistent, maybe start and stop, jerky video, uh, jerky sound, jerky report, uh, freezes, comes back, those sorts of things. So inconsistent or uh, variability, the, 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 the lot of words, variability over time and latency, 
simple words and consistent delay. Packet loss, how much of the, how many of the, of the data, how many packets, how much of the data gets damaged or lost during the transmission when we do these things. So the quality of service designs a set of parameters that controls the service provided, prioritizes traffic based on the importance and uses congestion avoidance methods to do these things. Congestion avoidance was, was uh, when we regulated what could come in to the uh, network at any given time uh, to do these things. Uh, so we're going to use congestion avoidance uh, to do these things. Quality of service, what we want is high bandwidth, low latency, low jitter, minimal uh, data loss, minimal packet loss. Uh, and assurance that prioritizing one type of traffic does not affect all the other types of traffic. What we don't want to do is prioritize all of our voice and video and then find out that we can't get any any websites. So we're not doing any data transfer. We can't get to a website. We can't send the uh, upload or download the important information that we need in order to run the business. Go back and again, uh, disclaimer, you only got to do this if you have insufficient bandwidth. So bandwidth, this is a kind of a little bit of a, what goes on here. Bandwidth versus speed, latency, and jitter. So we have the bandwidth here, the amount of speed available for use, gigabits per second. How much do we have on these things? Uh, the speed of the connection, the connection that we're getting to, is not necessarily going to be what we are defined uh, as the, the maximum. We have a 10 gigabit connection. Are we getting 10 gigabits? Yeah, you know, maybe or maybe not. I've got a gigabit uh, off of the computer and it goes to a gigabit to the switch. Am I getting a gigabit on the, uh, on the ISP? And the answer to that is no. I'm getting somewhere around 200 meg, which is pretty good. A lot better than when I first started these things. Uh, when, when we first started with a, uh, uh, broadband, it was, I think it was 10 meg. It was, it was, it was 10 meg at the time. And then, then it's keep work, keeps working its way up based on the improvement in the, uh, in the, uh, media and the way that we do encapsulation and the, and the way that we do, uh, uh, putting the information on the devices themselves. So we have the speed of the connection to do these things. Latency versus jitter. Latency is delay and jitter is going to be an inconsistent delay uh, when we do those things. Delay in milliseconds. Uh, the types of traffic that we have, I know that was kind of a, of a, uh, of a, okay, huh, uh, for that one, but what they do. We have uh, the, the jitter and delay are, are two of the real enemies of what goes on with these things. Uh, delay, you ever stream a, uh, a basketball game? Uh, and we do that. My, my wife is a, is a big UVA fan and we're in Wisconsin and they show up on the ACC network. Sometimes they're on cable and sometimes you know this doesn't work or that doesn't work and, and you watch it on cable and watch it on the stream and yeah, maybe they may be, they actually get up to uh, play segments that, that uh, a whole time out, they just started back on the, on the television and the, uh, and the stream still in the timeout. And even when we are each watching it on a different stream, the differences, the time differences can be different with those things. So the delay, yeah, is it a significant, can be significant uh, data? in these things, TCP, bursty and greedy. And bursty in the fact that we go to a website and we download the website. We're going to have quite a bit of traffic. Just like when you start an application on your computer, if you look at the CPU uh, utilization, it goes up to around you know, somewhere around 100% for a few seconds. So it's going to be bursty and greedy. Takes a lot of, as much of the bandwidth as it can. It's going to be drop insensitive and delay insensitive. Drop insensitive means that if we drop TCP traffic, when we go to the acknowledgement, it says, oh, you didn't get that. Let me send it again. The bursty and greedy is the fact that TCP uses what's called the TCP uh, sawtooth. So TCP starts out with the, band with the window size that we talked about. 
and the amount of data, it's going to try to increase until we get up to a point that says, okay, you've done enough. Back off. It'll back off 50%. Then it will build up again. Back off 50% build up again back off 50 percent this is this is called a tcp sawtooth uh, when, when we do uh, this type of traffic with it so we have that thing that goes on the bursty and greeting delay insensitive drop insensitive again delay insensitive if we are looking at a, a web page does it really matter uh, what goes on now the synchronization and sometimes I kind of try to look at these things on a tablet and you get some delay that the voice may be ahead of the of the video on these things especially when I try to write on this to do these things but it's delay insensitive drop insensitive when we do this the what we're doing now actually is is UDP if, if you do a Wireshark scan of it voice uses UDP it's not bursty it tends to be pretty consistent uh, is drop and delay sensitive. Uh, the one way requirements, latency, and these are the things we want latency less than 150 milliseconds, jitter less than 30 milliseconds, packet loss less than 1%, bandwidth 30k to 128k. Not a lot of bandwidth. If you ever look at voice packets, they're really small. They are very small, but there are a lot of them. Uh, video is bursty and greedy. Uh, drop and delay insensitive, the one way. Latency less than 150 milliseconds, similar here to voice. Jitter 30 milliseconds, the same. Packet loss 0.1% to 1%, same. Bandwidth is going to be higher for these things. And I think that I showed this the other day, but if you look at what goes on here in the statistics of the Zoom meeting, and this is in the settings, the video settings. The Zoom meeting here, we have the overall, this is just the CPU utilization that's going on. Zoom 15%, 47% memory, what it uses. But in the audio here, the frequency, the latency that we have, and the jitter that we have, are we within specs here for audio latency 150 milliseconds? 73 milliseconds for me. Uh, uh, jitter or latency, uh, jitter 5 milliseconds, 30 milliseconds. So we're within the specifications. Video, here I've got latency of 80 milliseconds and we wanted less than 150, 80, 50. It changes, goes up and down depending on what's going on. Jitter 2 milliseconds uh, for these things and we get frames per second down here in this little resolution size. Screen sharing, 73, 72 milliseconds, jitter, 6 milliseconds. So each of these components that are being sent out of this machine have different measures of quality that's going on, trying to maintain those qualities. The quality of service architecture implementation includes three techniques that are going to be used identification and marking what traffic do we care about uh, the techniques to implement the quality of service between the network components classification policy and marking so first we got to determine what do we want to manage the unfairness what do we want to give a priority to and then once we determine what we want to give a priority to what do we want to do with that traffic and that's what the, the uh, policy is going to be and then the marking steps is when we actually are going to apply that policy and we'll get to one of those in just a minute. Applying it on a single node involves the use of queuing and scheduling, traffic shaping. I'll uh, have uh, a, a little bit more of that as we go through this thing uh, to apply quality of service to a single node and then we can apply uh, policy management, accounting functions, uh, to the network, to the network as a whole, which is going to involve techniques to control and manage traffic in the network. Three levels, best effort. That's when we don't mess with it. We don't do anything with it. All traffic is treated, e created equally, treated equally, I guess treated equally. Uh, no differentiation is applied. Differentiated services, and if you look at the images down there at the bottom, best effort, IP, IPX, Apple Talk. 
the protocols that we use at layer three are best effort for those things. Differentiated, if you go on an airplane, you're going to be differentiated between first class, business class, and then uh, the rest of us in the coach class to do these things. Guaranteed guarantees a reliable transmission to speed. We reserve the network resources. We reserve the bandwidth. Nobody else can use this because it's reserved. Reserve parking place, reserved bandwidth, uh, reservation on an airplane or whatever else, but that's set aside for us when we do those things. The network classification, the uh, process of differentiating uh, network traffic types to implement quality of service. Identification, examine the uh, fields in the packets and classify the networks. And we can do this on a per hop basis or on a network wide basis. And one of the, on a network wide basis, if we classify something in a Cisco device, it's not going to be trusted. Those classifications aren't going to be trusted by the other Cisco devices. Network divide, network wide basis uh, packet is identified at the router and marked with an IP P, uh, which is a uh, uh, the ones that I can never remember here. IPP, the markings DSCP I remember uh, is a differentiated services control point. IPP is the old marking to do these things. Apply to priority queuing, custom queuing along with these things. So COS, class of service, IPP, DSCP, or access control lists can be used to match these things, and we'll do a little bit of each of those when we do the uh, demo. Policy-based routing, committed access rate, uh, network-based application recognition. ACLs is what we're going to start with, and then we're going to look at some of the markings that come into the second router. We're going to use two routers to do these things. We're going to mark it on one, send it to the other one, and then and then recognize it on the other router when we do these things. So we get the IPP here. IPP value, three bits of services that are in here, these things. We're going to have to determine the QoS uh, to be applied to the network traffic and packets carry priority information used to classify packets so that the packets of the same class can be forwarded with the same quality of service. Layer 2 has a class of service or a priority code point to indicate those and down here the class of service was used in the ISL frame header. So ISL uses class of service. PCP priority code point is something that we would see in the 802.1Q frames. The layer 3 IP precedence, and that's something that, yeah, you think I could remember that, wouldn't you? IP preferences, IP precedence, or differentiated services code point. IP precedence is uh, three bits, range and values from zero to seven, and then six bits in the type of service field. We can see, and I don't have anything in these, let's get rid of our SNMP, SN and then look in a in a TCP, we were talking about flags going up here. In the in the IP, we talked about this is going to be marked in the IP information, not in the TCP information. So we have the DSCP differentiated services code point. Uh, ECN uh, is is not set for nothing is actually set here. We have all zeros for this thing, so we have a the ability to mark these things and, and remember we're going to see CS0 again here in a few minutes. DSCP uh, CS0 which is is basically we haven't done anything. I, I have not been able to uh, capture one on my on my uh, GNS3 where it actually does some priorities for these things. So the classification and marking uh, what treatments for the incoming traffic we'll get the layer two class of service, three bit uh, priority fields when we do these things. Best effort uh, is uh, simpler to manage scalable uh, classification maps to the IP precedence. And when we say it maps to the IP precedence, one of the things that I had set up over here to show before we get to those things, and this is going to drive me nutty again. Go back up here to this, and I guess probably if I just 
do it again show and to see these things MLS QOS and then I can look at the maps we're going to map the class of service the 0 through 7 to the DSCP the differentiated services code, code point so DSCP to COS and COS to DSCP each of these depending on what we're going to a switch to a router a router to a switch is really what we're talking about here uh, they're going to map uh, automatically as long as we use the mappings the other thing while we're here show MLS QoS uh, quality of service interface and let's do fast Ethernet and I've forgotten which ones are on here let's say 2-1 and see if it's actually it's not one so show IP interface brief uh, so when we get to the next one so fast Ethernet 0, zero show MLS QoS interface fast Ethernet what was it zero slash one Inval oh yeah this one just gives me the invalid interface we'll look at those what what I was trying to show is that these things uh, we don't have any trust when we start out with and I think I'll probably do that in packet tracer so best effort or simpler the layer 3 type of service is going to be an 8-bit field it's gonna have more capabilities in it assign a precedence to each packet the most significant three bits are going to be used and it maps the packet to a particular forwarding behavior the DSCP differentiated services code point code point for these things I'm going to go back to here and let's see these yeah we didn't have the CS0 we're going to see that I think I've got that in one of the ones coming up here in a minute so the DSCP is concerned with the flow of traffic, source IP destination, source port destination, and the transport protocols uh, we would use for these things. The classification procedure is uh, classified according to the DSCP, separated into queues, uh, mark, uh, and marking or closer examination, and we can have shaping or dropping, shaping or policing. Shaping is when we actually uh, buffer the information and send it when uh, we have a, a bandwidth available. Not going to work very well for video and voice because buffering is going to give us the jitter that we don't want for these things. So the IPP, the three bits, the zero through seven routine, priority, immediate, flash, flash, override, critical, internet control, and network control when we, when we do these things. Five, your critical five is typically the one that voice traffic is going to be classified as. When we look at these, these are just assured forwarding, just some more tables that tell us what goes on with these things. Per hop failure, uh, per hop behavior, we can drop forward or reclassify uh, to do these things. The DSCP uh, consists of the behavior and the drop probability of these things. Are we going to drop it? Are we not going to drop it? And one of the things that we saw a little earlier that can be in these is a drop eligible marking that we can we can mark these things. So we have AF3 here, and this is what the uh, binary would look like, the differentiated services code point. Low probability of drop are all of the ones in the in the column A, uh, medium and high drop probability are going to be the ones in the last column over here, the, uh, the markings that go on to them. If we have TCP and we drop TCP, yes, we can do those things when we do that. We have the CS1, we don't have the default here, all zeros. The default would, would have been the CS zeros that we had in the DSCP that we just saw. I think that was CS0, right? Yep, CS0, and it was all ones. Just jump this back over here real quick. It's all ones here in the uh, default zero in the differentiated services code point. And up here, marking CS0 in it. We're going to have a lot of these things, and, and do you have to memorize all these? No. This is what is going to be used in order to mark the header information if we need to use uh, quality of service. AF assured forwarding, which is going to be the 
IPP of 011, IP precedence of 011, class 3, the decimal number that goes along with it. Differentiated services code point of 01110. The IPP and the DSCP, if you look at some of the uh, images, the markings, the header information, they change terminology and they change what's going on. And this is one of the things that goes back to the uh, to the models that we use. We can change certain elements of this to operate in today's environment without, without changing everything else that goes on with them. The behavior and then the drop probability that goes on in these things. Which parts of it is used? The behavior uh, three here, one, one, two, four, gives us the possibility of seven, and then the drop probability over here is going to be seven uh, to do these things. Which is going to be uh, the high or drop. How does it get zero one zero one two? Yeah, zero one two. Yeah, the no zero uh, one two four is what that should be. So drop probability anyway. We're going to have a two uh, with it. Zero one 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 zero is going to give us a a decimal number of twenty eight. The meanings of these things, and we'll go through this: EF expedited forwarding, AF assured forwarding, CS class selector, DF default forwarding, which is going to be the best effort uh, for these things. And then when we look at here, we have critical routine, priority, immediate and then flash override, the different areas that we go through these things. And the routine here, best effort all zeros, and as we go up through these things, separating them, uh, 0, 0, 001010, 0, 0, which gives us a decimal of 10, the AF11 low. Just the real purpose is this, give a, 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 a sense of what goes on here. The device trust uh, when a trust is enabled and by default the trust is not enabled uh, for these things and what I was trying to show in the other one and it wouldn't, it wouldn't play with me I think that I can do I think that I can do this in packet tracer if I go into this and, and this is, yeah, I can tell you, and then hopefully if I tell you, and then and we look at it, you say, oh, yeah, I remember that. Show MLS, QOS, and then interface, fast ethernet zero slash one. We see that we have the quality of service is disabled, trust state not trusted. So... If we want to trust, and trust is to trust the quality of service that is enabled on there, marked on the other device, we're going to have to enable the trust so that it trusts going from uh, maybe a switch to a router, and then it's going to use the mapping to map the one QoS function to the other QoS function. Can be configured to trust the differentiated services code point. IP precedence, class of service values in the IP packet frames. When it's enabled, the uh, device is said to be in a trusted state. Cisco devices are in an untrusted state by default. Different methods to classify the incoming packets the trusts are. Configure the interface to trust the DSCP value, and that was the one that we would use the mapping to map the one to the other. Configure to trust the class of service to DSCP map, and then apply a standard or extended access control list to uh, classify the traffic, and that's what we're going to look at. So the steps that we're going to do and what I want to do in that packet tracer is to, to, to go through a uh, kind of a step-by-step -step of what we do. We're going to identify the traffic, classify the traffic, map the traffic, and apply it. So the classification map is defined the classes of traffic, what we care about. Define the policy, what we're going to do with the traffic once we define it. And then once we set the policy, we have to apply the policy. Where are, where are we going to apply it? Who is it going to apply to? This one is kind of an odd one. And it, I found it on the internet. That's why it's kind of, a, of an odd one, I guess, here. But we got the boss up here. And boss says, if I ever can't, 
not get on the internet you might as well update your uh, resume today because you're going home and that's it no questions asked so we want to configure this and it's going to go a number of steps nothing really complex but a lot of steps involved here in order to be able to do the boss the boss's uh, ip address is 10.10.12.2 so what i'm going to do is go into this router and we'll go in and do our configurations uh, to do these things so we'll go into the config t the first thing that we want to do is to we have to classify the traffic we've got the routing and all all of those other things uh, configured so we should be able to go from one to the other well, i'm just going to go through these so we need to do an access list and i'm just going to do access list one and i know we haven't done those yet but we will tomorrow access permit and we're going to do host because it's only one device and it's 10.10.10 would help would work better right 10.10.10.10.12.2 so we have written the access control list and that's just kind of helping us define the traffic the next thing that is that it is defining the traffic the next thing we need to do is to in this in this uh, world here is to classify the traffic define the classes of traffic what traffic do we care about since our boss has told us we care about his traffic then we'll go in here and do a class and I can use a tab key class map and then a word, a match all, or a match any for this thing. And we're going to call it a class map. We need to name it. We'll call it boss. Once we get in here, we get, in, get into the configure class map configuration. So if we do the question mark, we can do a description, an exit, a match, or a no. What we're going to do is match. And then what we can we match an access group, an any, a class map, class of service, different things that can be matched for this thing. So what we're going to do is match and this is going to be access group which is going to match us to the access control list and that's kind of looks strange now but that's the term that we're going to use to match it when we get into uh, writing access control lists for these things. So after that we have now defined the traffic so the next thing that we need to do after we define the traffic here is write a policy what are we going to do with the traffic so what's the policy going to be with the boss here so let's go in here and do a policy map and we'll call it boss precedence boss press and so we're going to do this and we're in here and now we need to let's look at this thing it says what class so we need to now specify which classification policy which traffic that we're going to work on so the class and we can do that exit or no the class here was boss and if i made a typo here it tell me that i made a mistake so now we're going to configure the policy map uh, class and here what are we going to do with these things in this case i'm going to set set a precedence we can set the ip values i'm going to set a precedence and the precedents are the ones that we've seen before so we're going to set a precedence of five we're going to give the boss the same priorities that we uh, that we give to our voice over ip traffic the next thing that we need to do is to apply this thing so we need to apply it as either an inbound or an outbound policy coming into the device or going out of the device in this case we'll go to interface gig zero size zero if i can find the other zero zero dash zero and we're going to do a service policy and the service policy that we're going to use here uh, service policy input our output service policy is going to be input coming into the device as it comes in we're going to set its precedence for five and then the policy map name and in this case it was boss precedence so now we have configured this so that 
anything that comes into this router from this IP address is going to get a precedence level of 5. Go over to the second router and we're going to do some configurations with it. So we'll do config T. Drew and Justin got himself fixed. Great. Uh, config T on this thing. Uh, and we will then on the second router we do the class map again class map and let's call this one boss precedence 5 because those are the precedents that we're going to detect uh, when we come in here so we have the boss precedence 5 and when we go in here we got the description the exit and the match so we're going to do a match and remember on the other one we set his for precedence 5. So we're going to match precedence P R E C precedence 5 on this thing. So anything that comes into this router with precedence 5 we're going to we're going to match that. That's the traffic that we're looking for on this thing. So the next thing that we need to do back into what we're doing, we've now classified the traffic. Now we need to, what are we going to do with this traffic? So in what we're going to do with this traffic, we're going to use a class class map. And I want to config IF. Oh, that's the wrong router. No wonder. I don't want to use I don't want I don't want to do that. So we yeah, we're here we're going to do a what we're going to do. We did the classification maps or we did the uh uh, we did the classification, now we're going to do a policy map. Policy map, and then we're going to use the word, the policy map name, which was, what, boss precedence 5, which is up here. And again, just to show you, let's just use boss precedence. When I do that, actually, it, it's supposed to tell me that it's wrong. So let's don't do that. Let's do a no on this to get rid of this, just to be sure that we're not doing anything. And then let's use a boss precedence 5 for this one. So we're now doing the policy map. Uh, when we do that, what classification map are we using? The classification, the word here, and that's why I, that's why, yeah, this is where we were. This is the one, let's just try a boss precedence here. We were, we were uh, naming the other one. So if I do boss precedence here, if I make a typo, it says it's not configured. So I'm going to use the 5 command here to get down here for this one. Now what can we do? A number of things we can do here. What we're going to do with the boss is we're going to give him a bandwidth and the bandwidth that we define is a percent, the remaining or the number of kilobits per second. And this is when we talked about that, yeah, we have these uh, issues here that what are the uh, uh, the units that we use in Cisco and there can be different ones and that's where the help screen, the interactive help screen helps out with those. But in, in this case we're going to define, going to send him uh, with 20 percent of the bandwidth. And let's go to an exit and an exit and here we'll go to interface gig 0 slash 0 again and now we're going to assign it with a service policy uh, output on this and it's boss bandwidth. Is that what I assigned to this thing? Let's see if it is. Yeah, it's the wrong one. Uh, boss bandwidth policy map. What did I name the policy map? Class map. And let's see. What did we name the policy map? Policy map boss precedence 5. And I think that I probably messed that up. Let's see if it works. So it took it. Now the boss should have 20% of the bandwidth. And you can see if you make a mistake in the which ones you're doing, it'll tell you. It's a lot of steps, and I don't deny that. A lot of steps for this thing, and it can get confusing, and that's why 
keeping all of this stuff kind of sorted out, uh, isolated one to the other can be helpful with these things. So we have the class map, ID to the classification map, the policy map, and then we're going to apply the policy for these things. This is kind of the step by steps that we had in order to, uh, that we did in the configuration that we had for these things. I'm just trying to see how far we've got to go and for break time here. So the mappings themselves, that we have the policy map associates uh, uh, traffic with a class with one or more quality of service policies can have a maximum of 256 classification statements of these things. This is this is kind of sort of what we did in these things. We have and then we have the class map. The class map actually is going to be created before the policy map. Uh, policy map uses the class map with it. To do these things. So let's, let's keep going with quality of service here for a few minutes, then we'll get into the labs in, in, in just a few minutes. But input policy maps, we looked at that. That that's what we were doing the first time around when we marked the boss's IP address. We, we specified we want his IP address and marked it with a precedence level of five. So the input policy map as it comes into the device. Marks of packets at, that are received at the, at the interface can drop packets that don't conform with the permitted rates, depending on how we configured. So what kind of traffic are we going to have? We can drop traffic here. We can also remark traffic here. We can mark, remark, or we can mark it based upon the type of traffic that it is. When a packet exceeds the limits, its priority levels are reduced or marked down. Uh, up to 32 classes are available in here, and the uh, uh, the default class is defined by class default. And default, remember, is something that's going to happen, going to be used if nothing else applies for these things. So uh, the class provides a quality of service action for packets that do not match any of the classes in the policy. Output policy maps at the outgoing interface come, coming out, and we did that on the second router where at the outgoing interface, we said, okay, boss, you can have 20% of the traffic. Uh, after when it came in, said, we're going to mark you for a five. And that was so that we could keep track of things as it went from one device uh, to the other device uh, to do these things. So we had the, uh, the scheduling queuing mechanism on the packets themselves on the interface uh, that goes on with it. And then we had the, uh, uh, the the access groups are not supported in output policy maps. Access groups were what we used to specify the access control list that we created. So if we did an access control list, we need to do something with it as it comes into an interface like we did uh, with the one that we had. Uh, to go from one to the other. And what we talked about earlier that they don't trust this, the, the don't trust is still valid here because we uh, did a, uh, a, a map, a classification map, and we cl reclassified the traffic on the second router. We didn't trust the markings from the first router to do those things. The QoS actions in the output policy map, uh, queuing or waiting, bandwidth limiters, shape limiters, uh, default class is used to match uh, packets that don't match any of the other classes, just like uh, you know, all of the other things we have a default. The default is if we don't do anything, then the default is going to take place. Just like in the uh, VLANs, if we don't do anything, everything's on the default VLAN, VLAN 1, which is going to be the unmarked VLAN, the native VLAN. Only packets that are already matched by an input policy map are matched by the output policy map. So we can do those, can do that. We had an input policy map coming into some place, came across, we matched it, and then we can, uh, we can then match it with the output policy map. Same image that we saw a little bit earlier, but what are we trying to do with these things? Congestion management, congestion avoidance. And again, we got the uh, the little thing here use use the use to drop congestion avoidance, drop packets uh, to avoid congestion later in the network. 
And if we go back to the traffic, the carpool lane, we got congestion management. We have the congestion. We allow certain amounts of traffic or certain traffic classifications to use the carpool lanes. Usually how many we have. The congestion avoidance, again, I think maybe a better example that we see, you probably see on, on a regular basis or on a basis, is getting onto the interstate during rush hour. Uh, they have traffic lights, or at least around here they have traffic lights to regulate how much traffic can get on at a time. And this is the, uh, the congestion avoidance dropping packets. And this would be a TCP thing. Wouldn't work so great for UDP because it doesn't have any resend capability. Congestion, it's going to occur. Need a way to sort it out. The queues, the queues, the lines, and these devices do have queues inside them that get classified. Uh, logical ordering of packets and output buffers. We have a round robin, and a round robin is just uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, regardless of what's going on. The weighted round robin is we can give certain of the queues a higher priority than the others. And then we have low latency. Latency, remember, is our delay for these things. Uh, LLQ scheduling, low latency queue scheduling. We're going to break the data up into video, uh, voice, and data traffic. And then on the outgoing port, we're going to use a scheduling process in order to send that in, that uh, data out of, out the outgoing interface. And again, if you don't have a uh, if, if you don't have a, a, a bandwidth problem, we don't need to, to use these things. So prioritization configurations uh, classified based on the importance of what goes on in these things. So we have the different levels of traffic are going to get different priorities. And this is just kind of a, a of an image over here that gives us an idea of what goes on with these things. Class based weighted fair queuing uh, is a commonly used as the scheduling tool for prioritizing the traffic. And you can see over here we get network control gets shifted down here to the CS7, uh, CS6, CS7. Uh, the voice is going to go up here to EF. It's got, it's got reserved for it 30% of the bandwidth. All this other stuff going to be higher or lower on the totem pole, on the classification uh, pole here. But each of them is going to have 70% of the bandwidth available to them. Multimedia, critical data, bulk data, scavenger, unclassified. Kind of the order that these things are going to go in. And if you can see the, the line sort of in here, we break the remaining percentage out into the percentages. Maybe how much of it gets sent at a time because we can, you know, send, send three uh, uh, voice, well, let's, see, let's, send, let's send five voice and then we'll maybe send three video and then send one data. So what we want to do is to be sure that we don't wipe out the data by assign, by assigning a high priority to higher priority, very high priority to everything else. Video going to require a higher bandwidth than even voice. Voice needs a certain amount. It needs reserve traffic. It needs to be smooth. Voice going to be very small packets when we when we look at it. So priority queuing with LLQ low latency queuing. Uh, is the preferred prioritization for interactive video transmission, video conferencing. For example, kind of the things that we are doing here. Uh, voice uh, priority queuing with LLQ is the most preferred low latency queuing. We need low latency in both of these things. Class based waiting fair queuing is the most preferred for the non-interactive video transmission. The Netflix the Amazon videos of the world, YouTube uh, videos of the world. The queuing mechanisms that can be used is FIFO, first in, first out. Not good for voice or video. Uh, voice packets could be delayed by the larger packets. Priority queuing, uh, the lower priority queues are served only when the higher priority queues are empty. 
this is one that we could actually wipe out the lower pri lower priority queues at least for a certain amount of time because uh, we can get pri low priority starvation. The, the high priorities are using everything. Custom queuing services 16 queues in a weighted round robin fashion. <clears throat> Introduces delay and jitter so that it's got, each of these is going to have its own issues as you might guess. There is no perfect one. A perfect one would be that we would uh, have sufficient bandwidth. Weighted fair queuing divides the Ethernet band into a number of flows. No bandwidth guarantees that latency can occur in the high priority traffic. So we're going to have uh, data flows in this thing that, that we're going to that we're going to keep the information together uh, when we use the flows when we use the flow concept. Class based weighted fair queuing. Guarantees the exact bandwidth to a certain classes and the higher priority traffic uh, does not suffer latency, what we want to use for these things. And class-based weighted fair queuing can have up to 64 traffic classes. This is, we looked at the header information a little bit, and I think this one, destination, yeah, this, this yeah, differentiated DSCP, differentiated services field, differentiated services code point, if you look here, it actually has a marking in it. When we looked at the one that I didn't have any markings in, it was CS0, which was a zero in the marking here. So this one is now expedited forwarding is going to be used for it. DSCP0 by 2E. And we can go back to what all of those numbers look like if you want to go back and do a, a relook, re kind of calculation of those things. Congestion avoidance, uh, TCP windowing techniques can, can do that. We looked at those uh, cues, the, the, the reduced congestion at the cues by using the windowing techniques. And we can get feedback. We know we can get feedback from the uh, routers. We can get back, feedback from the devices that we've filled up the buffer. The buffers are full. I can't take any more data. It sends us back. And the colloquial term is a choke point that says slow down, reduce the window size. The, the sliding window that we looked at in the demo uh, last week as we go through that, that we move down the data, we can adjust the size of that. The window size is negotiated during the, uh, the uh, three-way handshake. It can be adjusted during the transmission so that we don't overwhelm something that we have this this reduces congestion that goes on when they're full at the outgoing interface the packets at the end are a drop this is called tail drop the packets are in that we're full and we're getting more packets coming in so we're just gonna drop them that's the kind of the concept except we eventually let them in for the uh, the uh, traffic lights at the uh, at the interstate if we didn't want any of them on maybe the police would set out at the interest of the interstate that particular on ramp and, and put a block up blockade that one so that we have tail drop we're dropping that traffic before it gets into the uh, into the stream of traffic Maximum and minimum thresholds of the number of packets that are going to be established. We're going to have an image here in just a second. The queue depth, the number of packets in the queue that's less than the minimum threshold is no action. This is how much traffic we can accept. And this is number of packets. This is just a random number that goes into this particular image for these things. The, the next the number of packets is between the uh, minimum and the maximum we're going to increasingly start randomly dropping TCP packets. TCP because TCP is going to say, I didn't get it. Resend it when we do these things. So you got to, you know, when we talk about what we're going to do with these things, TCP traffic, we're probably not talking about, and we're not talking about voice and video because those are going to be UDP. And then when we get past the maximum threshold, we just drop all of the packets. And this would be, the no action would be like maybe not at Russia or getting onto the interstate. Uh, the 5 to 20 percent, depending upon the traffic flow that's detected on the interstate, the red lights turn on for random amounts of times or increasingly greater amounts of time as the traffic increases until eventually we're getting too much traffic, we're at the maximum 
the police officer goes at the, at the entrance to the interstate and, and sets a barrier up, doesn't let any traffic off on, drops all of the traffic from getting into it. This is a an attempt to show the weighted random early detection, W red. So we have a flow one, we're going to have a number of flows that go in here. The tail drop once we exceed the maximum, we have the interface utilization for these things. Tail drop, we're going to drop a certain amount of traffic on these size, on these things. We've reduced the window size so we can only have so much traffic available. We may have started out with a, a larger window size. Reduce the window size, it's going to be reduced. Now we're going to get a second flow that goes on with these things and then a, a third flow that goes on. As the window size gets increased, and that's what this is showing in this thing, hopefully, uh, window size gets increased, we can now send more traffic based on how much is available, how much bandwidth is available, what kind of resources do we have. The flows back off or increase simultaneously uh, leaves much of the bandwidth underutilized when we do these things. So. These will all use the same window size, the flows will, when we go from one to the other. A couple of terms here, we're going to have policing and shaping. Policing controls bursty traffic, make sure that the designated traffic flows get the correct bandwidth. Policing just simply drops the traffic if it doesn't comply, actually can drop it or remark it to a different priority uh, when we do this thing. Changes the precedence of the packets to chop off excessive flows for these things, uh, causes a lot of TCP resends uh, used as an ingress tool going into the interface and it's based on the types of policers that are used. We have policing, we can have individual policing, aggregate policing, or unconditional priority policing for these things. But I think the key thing to take away from policing is it drops the traffic, it's pretty harsh. It's brutal. It just says no uh, for the tail drop. The traffic shapers, on the other hand, uh, are at the outgoing interface. The traffic shaper can buffer the information. It can delay what's going on. Uh, policers drop chat traffic. Shapers buffer access traffic. Okay for data not so good for voice and video. That would be when you would get, you're watching your uh, uh, Netflix movie and you get, you know, stops and starts on the, uh, on the movie itself. So we have those things. Uh, shapers use the shaping rates to schedule the transmission of these things. Ensures that the transmission rate does not exceed the specified shaping rate for these things. It's a congestion management tool like the class-based weighted fair queuing and the low latency scheduling for these things. Images that are an attempt to show what goes on for these things. Policing used to enforce the uh, data rate limit on this one. Policing, if we look over here to the right, it simply drop, chops off the, the, uh, the flow here, chops off the data. So that all of this stuff that goes above the rate and the line's kind of hard to see here, I guess, a little bit. There's a little dotted line where the uh, pointer's going. That's going to be the maximum data rate. It chops it off, doesn't send it, doesn't get their TCPS for a resend. Shaping here, we're going to buffer, and over here on the right, we go through here, we go above the offer traffic, the target traffic rate for these things over here. We're okay, we we'll go above it. And then we get down in this area, we have excess bandwidth. We're going to buffer it and be able to send it during the time where we have uh, more bandwidth than we need for the, for the traffic that's going at the time. So a summary here of these things, a policing drop or remarks the traffic, remarks, remarks it to a lower priority. TCP retransmissions, uh, there is no buffering. We don't have jitter and delay, we just don't get it. Uh, it is harsh and requires a lot of retransmission. Shapers, on the other hand, don't drop traffic, they delay traffic. The result is going to be a delay and jitter on these things, but it is gentler, it's a gentler, kinder world for uh, for them.